You're watching Chili Boy Productions. I'm Larry Chili Boy Chilson, and this is a reaction to Game of Thrones Season 6, Episode 4. And as always, for each and every Game of Thrones reaction, I am joined by my co host, Tyler. Hey, Tyler. Hello, it's great to be back talking some more Game of Thrones. Uh, last episode was pretty awesome in my opinion, so I'm very intrigued to see where we go next, I guess especially with Jon Snow since he kind of just left, you know, his watch has ended, so I don't know where that leads next, so I'm very excited to see where that goes. And we are joined by Christian from the Film Optics Podcast. Hi, Christian. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> nice. Christian Thank you so him. much for having me on, Larry. It's, I mean, I've been watching your reactions for a while. I'm like, man, I really want to be on that show. Like, I, I haven't rewatched Game of Thrones in a while, so I'm, I'm very excited to uh, dive into this. <laughs> well, I knew Christian was a fan of the show, so we had to get him on. We're hoping these guests work out for season six. We have quite a few episodes because there are quite a few eventful episodes of the season. Uh, we were supposed to have a couple of people in season five, but you know, you know how schedules and all that fun jazz works. So, but to catch Christian and anyone else up, Last episode was Oathbreaker, and we saw Samwell and Gilly on their way trucking along to the mainland in which they were headed to Old Town, so Samwell could try to become a maester. But then he's like, just kidding, Gilly. They don't let women and children in, so I'm That's actually nice. taking you to stay with my parents over in the Reach at Horn Hill. So she reluctantly is kind of agreeing to that though she doesn't really want to be split up from him again then we saw bran going back in time once more with the three-eyed raven this time to a pretty epic battle i think consensus here was probably the best hand-to-hand -hand fight scene of the entire series so far with Definitely sir arthur dane taking on ned stark and his entire little gang but before we could see what was in those towers that sir arthur dane was trying to prevent ned from getting to the three-eyed raven brings bran back to the present then we see Masande, Grey Worm, Tyrion, and Varys kind of having a little council, if you will. Tyrion really, just really trying it with <laughs> Masande <laughs> and Grey Worm, trying to get them to speak, while Varys is getting that information from our infamous prostitute out here. And he learns that the Sons of the Harpy are being funded by the great masters of Yunkai Astapor. Now, Tyrion wants to invite them over, though Missandei and Grey Worm are like, uh, slave masters don't speak this type of language. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> Violence is the answer. Then we see Cersei coming on down to Kyburn's little lair, where he is luring in the little birds, the children in his basement. <laughs> That was, yeah, that she was a sketchy scene. That she is planning on submitting the mountain for trial by combat against the faith militant, the seven. Um, <laughs> and he gets his claws back into little old Tom. And he came in hot. He tried to like stand his ground for his mom, but. Jonathan Price as the High Sparrow was too much to overcome. He got time in his clutch. Speaking of that with the mountain, I mean, I, I don't think I brought it up when we talked about it last episode. Would that be like the first time that someone's like lost a trial by combat and then come back to fight <laughs> in another trial by combat? I, I think that's the first. I think that that's going. That's one for the Westeros history book. <laughs> is, that, is, that a, is that a first where someone can literally lose? and die and then come back and, and fight in another lots one of resurrection first here john gave us another first uh seems, later it seems like a loophole <laughs> seems like a very <laughs> big loophole in the system but i mean yeah. more power to her but then we see aria uh being trained still by the waif though now she's in the house of black and white and finally though 
Mr. Jack and Hagar gives her her sight back after she takes down the wave for like the first time while she was blind. Now she gets her eyes back. So yay, Arya can see. <laughs> <laughs> then we see Ramsay has possession of Osha and Rickon after the Umbers betrayed House Stark and turned them over. So that's fun. And finally... Jon Snow has one final act as Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, and he hangs Sir Alistair, he hangs Ollie, and the other, like, betrayers that stuck with their guns. And after he kills them, tells Ed, you can keep this cloak, you can do whatever the hell you want, my watch is ended, y'all killed me, or they killed me, so I'm done, my duties are over, and I am out. Peace. And that's how we ended the episode. <laughs> made sure to made sure to kill his enemies before he left, at least. Yeah, you know, had, to, had to get rid of little Ollie first <laughs> before he hit the road. Tie some loose strings, you know. Savagery. Yeah. He's well, like a manager leaving. <laughs> leaving a job. He's like, by yeah. the way, you're gone. Yeah, by the way, you're fired. Yeah. Okay, now I quit well, bye. Kinda, well, yeah, at least in that sense, you're fired and not hung. All right, well, it, like... now we have episode four, Book of the Stranger. So let's go ahead and see what this one is all about. Yay. Oh. <laughs> what are you going to do? Get warm? <laughs> I mean, can you blame him? Oh, well. Look at this frozen tundra up here. I was with you at the hard home. You swore a vow. I, I pledged my life to the Night's Watch. I gave my life. For all nights to come. They killed me, Ed, my own brothers. <laughs> you mean... want me to stay here after that? Who could it be? Oh my god! The they made it! <laughs> I was coming. nervous that... I, I was nervous that John was gonna leave, and then they would get there afterwards, and they wouldn't cross paths. That what happened though. Like, <laughs> it's... oh, he seems really smitten with them. It looks like, especially Brienne. <laughs> he, he looked. He looked shook. Shooketh. Yay! Finally, some side of some kind of family reunion. Seriously though. <laughs> First time they've seen each other since what episode two of the whole show? Yeah, that's what I mean. Finally, some people reuniting after so many seasons. Yeah, the Starks have not had the best luck. <laughs> yeah, naturally, had to be his least favorite sibling, but you know, still a sibling. Still, you know, we're happy. We're happy. Yay. Woo. Boy, does he have some stories to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> But you're not gonna believe what happened. <laughs> yeah, I got I got stabbed. I died a couple days ago. I'm back. Do you remember those kidney pies old man used to make? I was awful, just admit it. Oh well, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I think every most people were pretty mean to John. <laughs> like I feel like we're old enough that I can actually admit that you were terrible. <laughs> right. All right, I forgive you. Where will we go? Ooh, no more separations. <laughs> There's only one place we can go. Home. Oh? Oh, snap. Should we tell the Boltons to pack up and leave? We'll take it back from them. Oh, snap again. We're going to take it back. I don't have an army. We have to fight for it. I'm tired of fighting. <laughs> Poor John. It's all I've done since I left home. I want you to help me. But I'll do it myself if I have to. No. I mean, I would like, I mean, I mean that's, that's nice, I guess. I'd like to see it. It's Davos. We serve Jon Snow now. Oh. He's the prince that was promised. Oh, all right. Stannis is dead, Davos, so she said, time to move on. She's changed her mind. 
She's bandwagoning. <laughs> Poor Davos. <laughs> Bill's confused she as ever. She gave up on him being the prince that was promised the day she looked at him and said, you know what, let me actually jump on my horse and leave before the battle. <laughs> oh. Tell the princess. I saw what happened. No. Oh. I saw uh -oh. his forces defeated in the field. My lady, I'm Sir Davos Seaworth. We've met before. I was King's Guard to Renly Baratheon. Ooh. Before Renly was assassinated with blood magic. Well, this conversation's about to get real awkward real fast. <laughs> Run, <Yeah>. Melisandre. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. She's still angry. Stannis. Just before I executed him. Oh. <laughs> All right. She, she Great conversation. She said, and what what are either one of you two gonna do about it, huh? Right. That's She's right. like towering over them. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Right. I'm not taking that. Oh, Tyler's favorite's back. Oh, oh god, the milk boy's grown up. <laughs> <laughs> and he can't shoot an arrow worth the shit. Very sickly boy. <laughs> well. Defender of the Veil. Oh God, him too. <laughs> it's been a while since we've seen Littlefinger, huh? The milk boy looks like he needs like a nap. He's <laughs> getting cranky. Nope. There he <laughs> goes, ready to throw the folks to the moon door. It's always a, always goes back to that moon door. My lord, it's not looking for too good for you, my guy. Mm. Oh. <laughs> you get the to live one more day. <laughs> the way Littlefinger just pulls these strings. I bring good news. You should help her. That was my instinct as well. <laughs> Our Lord has spoken. The time has come to join the fray. Right, well, now we're, now we're going to put them into the mix. <clears throat> yeah. Don't make peace with the queen's enemies. I killed the queen's enemies. Yes, that's the military approach. <laughs> How has that worked here in Marine? How many days were you asleep? Long enough. To... <laughs> Not long enough to understand. Hmm? He said I was a slave. I would know. <laughs> oh, only for a couple. Only for a little yeah. while. Here's like two weeks. <laughs> for a single gold honor. Just because your master has silver hair and tits doesn't mean she's not a master. Friends, friends. <laughs> Friends, please. He's there oh. by his own accord, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Very well, Thank afraid you. Of, afraid to kill. There haven't been slaves in Westeros for hundreds of years, and I grew up richer than any of you. Tyrion just flexing on the boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm rich. You aren't. Abolishing <laughs> slavery. We will give you seven years to end the practice. Oh, that's kind of a long time. As a parting <laughs> gift to our honored guests. Nope. Oh. does not seem to like Tyrion's uh, leadership tactics. <laughs> not at all. It's a bit. <laughs> so uh, we're going to ease into it. We're going to you seven time. years, almost it's a decade. Case, it's a long time. It's a very long time. Jemosi, <laughs> John Bagon. <laughs> He'll be rusty, Tyrion. <laughs> yeah, let her shot. translate. We speak the common tongue. Yeah, whatever that meant. Fat time. <laughs> That is a good question. To be determined. <laughs> he said, I don't know. <laughs> they, don't even, they don't even know where she is. No, she's in my They know I am loyal, as do I. I am loyal to my queen, not you. Mm -hmm. If you betray her work, you are my enemy. I am not. Bay Worm's ready to switch on him real fast. <laughs> for a short time. Seven years is not a short time for a slave. Yeah, that's pretty true. You're right. Slavery is a horror that should be ended at once. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the situation in Marine stays messy mm. as ever. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's Everyone's angry. Yeah. All the time. Jorah looks like he's about half dead back there. But... It's, it really is like the whole, you know, book to screen thing. Like, Jorah is looking, Jorah is looking filthy as ever. 
much discipline as a child. Is it? <laughs> and let you me lack... beat you right now. <laughs> you lack discipline. I'm going to make up for lost time, Dario. Bend over and let me beat that ass right now. <laughs> the road running through the horse gate they called out oh. God's way. They made They're it. Here. West of Bach. I don't think they could take on that many people, though. It's forbidden to carry weapons in the sacred city. Isn't it forbidden to sneak into their city and steal their currency? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we should be worried about traditions right now. <laughs> right. They see weapons. We're going for the stealth mission today, get Christian. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is like, a, I think it's like Sam Fisher style in a way. Well, I mean, we're n we're not uh we're not fighting our way out of the mission. Oh Oop. yeah, you've been spotted, Jora. Yeah, where's that been this whole time? It's, it's spreading awful slow. It's like, don't touch my knife, actually. <laughs> Step yeah, away. Never mind. Yeah. I'm not social sure how distance transferred. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna do the thing where they? where they knock people out and then take their clothes like you see in a lot of <laughs> movies and stuff like that so they can blend in. Uh -oh. <laughs> Stealth mission is oh. not going well. Jorah's <laughs> uh, He lost like his step, Jorah. <laughs> yeah. He's pulling oh, Obi-Wan oh. right now. He's like, I can't do oh. this. <laughs> yeah. Should have brought a weapon. <laughs> nope. Hmm. Oh, oh. Well, well, at least he's doing well in his fight. Jorah, on the other hand. Oh, wow. <laughs> there's some sand in there. There's some sand at him. <laughs> Pocket sand. Oh, well, you tried, Jorah. Oh. Oh. Somebody found a weapon. There we go. Oh. He brought the knife. I told you. There you take it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's the that's the way to cover it up and bash him. Yep. <laughs> yeah, isn't that ghost from Ant Man and the Wasp? Yes. Is it? Oh, that is her. Okay. I say I asked last week and I didn't get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. Oh. We have to go now. We will never get out of Face Off Track alive. All we can do is try. <laughs> it's worth a shot. We could leave now. <laughs> yeah. And you're going to help me now. Oh, oh, come on. No. Oh, I mean, we haven't seen oh. her in a while. Forgot about this plot line. Confess. <laughs> Never. Shame. Family, of course. But for you, that means seeking out money, finery, power. Seeking out your family means seeking out sin. I'm not. <laughs> Where else is she supposed to go? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You just leave entirely, I guess. Let's go and see him. Hmm. Your brother. Oh. Oh yay! We're gonna finally see him after even you know about as much time as we haven't seen her. <laughs> I gotta say that was a really great monologue from Jonathan Price. <laughs> Just the way he was laying there had me nervous for a second there. Just like the way he was just laying there like a corpse. Happy reunion. <laughs> Family reunions going all around. <laughs> I hope we get Loris out of there. Mm. You can stop. Iron Fist said, please, please. Yeah. Poor, poor Loris. He's just too broken at this point. Oh yeah. What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, like get the hell out. I am advising the king. The king. Make this a small council meeting. Obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> if there's one thing Cersei's gonna do, it's gonna make sure to drag Vicel every time they speak. Roast him as every chance she gets. <laughs> it's like you better pick up the pace. <laughs> Look at it. They have the same haircut. <laughs> it's all the rage. 
<laughs> in Westeros. And of course, Marjorie's safety is paramount. I know she's lying. Yeah, I'm sure and she's top of your list to save. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you really like her, don't you? <laughs> she just dodged that question completely. <laughs> Marjorie is the queen, with beggars in the street, with nothing. You know, whose fault was it that they're even here? <laughs> like, in retrospect. <laughs> let's look at the facts, shall we? <laughs> yeah, let's recap. Wasn't recap your recap. best plan now, was it, Cersei? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I'm just thinking. I do love it when Cersei gets called out for, like, this crazy stuff that she does. And she tries to back mm -mm -mm. up. Would have thought we were perfectly clear the first time. You're not welcome. First things first, you're not welcome. What's left to work with? Oh, just in case here. But before that, Queen Marjorie will make her walk of atonement. Oh man, she's getting one too. Marjorie will repent her sin. That will not happen. I agree. Oh, do you? Oh. Were you expressly forbidden from standing down? This is a very interesting plan. <laughs> the thing will be over before anyone can call on you to do anything. When the High Sparrow's in custody, or dead, preferably, <laughs> and Marjorie's back at Tom and side. And stand aside, and let the people that took him from you be destroyed. All right, we're putting a plan together, huh? Take out the Sparrow. <laughs> goes planned. They will die no matter what we do. Better them than us. Oh? Yes. <laughs> all right, all right Elena. She said yes. It's like, all right. Oh, Cersei, you got Elena on board. <laughs> We're finally teaming up together. All right. Good she got them. her on her side. Don't mess it up now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. We're, he's still on the way. He's going to be seeing a real shit show when he gets back. Yeah. They told me you were home and I didn't believe it. Another family reunion. <laughs> It really is a family reunion episode. He's dead. He's been dead a long time. I can see this reunion is not as <laughs> friendly as the other one. <laughs> <laughs> he broke me. He's like, yeah, I can oh, see that. Like, <laughs> I, I still feel bad. I, I feel I feel more bad for Theon nowadays than I did a while ago. Oh yeah. You're the only one that doesn't ever... matter anymore. Stop crying. Look at me. Tell me what you want. You should rule the Iron Islands. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Help you. I just saw her in Harry Potter for the first time in my last reaction. Oh, really? Oh, oh reaction. <laughs> you know who I am? And I've seen worse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Starting off strong, Osha. <laughs> she said, show no weakness. <laughs> it's like, be sh the wildling be eating, folks. So, what are we doing here? <laughs> oh, God. Same thing men always want. Well, this escalated in a way I was not <laughs> ex wanting, I guess. No, don't go for the knife. <laughs> Wow. That's a uh, odd foreplay. Who helped him escape? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it'd be a bad idea. <sighs> just when she just came back, too. Right. Like we brought her back to kill her like this. Terrible. That sucks. I don't know what is all this going to be. Oh, that looks real appetizing. <laughs> so I'm just like, what the fuck y'all try to feed me? <laughs> I don't even know what that's supposed to be. What was that, what was that even know. supposed to be? Even Brienne is looking like, what the hell? <laughs> that's a meal or what is going on on this plate? <laughs> Bring back oh, Renly. Oh, <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> he said, how are uh, you doing? <laughs> giving, him the, giving her the eyes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, what the hell is he doing? Yeah. 
traitor Ambassador Jon Snow. <laughs> you allowed thousands of wildlings. What a way to open a letter. You have betrayed your own kind. <laughs> you have betrayed the North. Your brother Rickon is in my dungeon. Oh. Uh oh. Well, he's alive, I guess. She's more the same. <laughs> he said, "Nah, I want to read that bullshit." Yeah, the letter got worse as it kept going on. Soldiers take turns raping your sister, Ramsay Bolton, Lord of Winterfell. Well, that was a horrible letter. Colorful imagination. What? Yeah. How many do you have that can march and fight? Not that many. Two thousand. They have a giant. True. How many men does that equal? Like the one giant. What's the conversion yeah. rate? I think that's the strength of at least like maybe 15, 20 men. I don't know. <laughs> you gotta go. I mean, yeah, reluctantly. Okay. <laughs> we know you're tired, <laughs> John. Or Sansa. Just as we thought we were going to get away from her being involved in conflicts, we're gonna go back to yeah. a giant battle with Sa with uh, Ramsay and them, probably. <laughs> Oh, so I guess they did just ignore that he got stabbed because his head got crushed. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, trial time. This is going to be interesting. I'm sure this will be a very fair trial. <laughs> That's rude. Oh, when this when did this turn into like a roasting session? <laughs> yeah. This is a trial. Nope. That's a lot of horses. Huh? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Got him. Mm. Oh. That's rude. Khal Drogo is dead because Khal Drogo thought he could take a stab wound to the chest. Yeah. Just to be clear. <laughs> it did not go well, yeah. No. Modern medicine has not hit the uh, eastern seaboard. <laughs> yeah, stand up to him, Daenerys. Good for you. Oh. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> Surprise. And they're like, what the hell? How kind did of drug she get out back before she came up in here? She's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Oop. Time to burn. <laughs> Good thing I can't. <laughs> you thought they were already shook, even when she just put her little hand on there. Yeah. Yeah, surprise. Well, it's not looking good for everybody else. So thanks no. for making your hut out of wood and straw and shit. Right. <laughs> Much appreciated. Nope. And they're locked in. <laughs> Damn, no, that's all he has, motherfucker. <laughs> and she's and she's just gonna walk out of there unscathed. Yeah. And let me just do the next one. <laughs> and for Oops. the finale. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> hey. And now it. you. <laughs> I'm sorry. What were you gonna do again? What, what was that? What you said? Should have listened to my long title. This is this is this is like the end of midsummer, but like times like five hundred. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh yeah. So lately. They're like, wow, look at all that fire. <laughs> what the fuck happened here? Right. <laughs> right. Oh, sorry. Uh, she she go walk out. Yeah. Surprise. Ooh, the woman is shit. <laughs> I would be. I would be too. <laughs> These are all my people now. Oh. <laughs> All right, that's a large amount of people. See Anakin for Obi Wan in that flame. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
Even that raggedy old woman is bending the knee. <laughs> oh, oh, this is the first time Dario has seen has seen her walk out of the flame. He said, "Wow." I would be kind of confused too. He's like, "What the hell?" <laughs> like, all right, I, I guess I, I'll I, do it too. <laughs> I, don't want to I mean, he was already kneeling for her, but you know, it's a man. Oh yeah. Oh. Good for her. Now she's got a, a big old extra army now, I guess. Now she has the Dothraki. It's a lot of them, too. Well, all right. That was <laughs> episode number four, Book of the Stranger. And, well, lots of family reunions, as we talked about before. I mean, they were happening left, right, and center this episode. <laughs> Family's Only one of much. them really happy though. The other two, well, mm, I mean, they kind of they were, you know, Yara and Theon. They got there. They got there. But uh, yeah. first up, we see Jon Snow preparing to leave the Night's Watch for good. He's packing up his mess and is like, "Ed, I know what I saw beyond the wall, but look, y'all gonna have to deal with that yourself now. I tried. I've been doing everything I could to to get." y'all in line and they killed me for it so good luck i'm i gotta go but just in the nick of time sansa brianne and Padraig roll in and obviously john is like well shit okay let me stay first <laughs> i'm glad that they that actually did have work out that way i was nervous yes but we also see in this moment brianne Having a little moment with Melisandre and Sir Davos, who are having a discussion about what actually happened. Davos is like, look, he sent me away. What happened to D not just Stannis? I want to know what happened to Shireen. And obviously, Melisandre does not want to give up that information. <laughs> um, so no. uh, in the meantime, Brienne cuts in and is like, yeah, no. Uh, Stannis confessed his treachery to me and his use of the dark <laughs> magic, ma'am. Uh, right before I killed him in revenge for Renly. And they were like, oh, oh, shit, okay. Like, oh, Sandra, especially. She was like, oh, shit. <laughs> then we get a letter up to the Night Watch a little bit later in the episode when Sansa and John and the rest are all around a table. Tormund is giving Brienne some eyes while over a meal. Yeah. We get a letter from Ramsay, basically like, look, I got your little brother. I'm going to kill him. I want Sansa back. Yield now. I'm going to kill you too. All of it. We're going to do all the horrible things. And this convinces John after he had resisted uh, Sansa's plea to go back to war. That, okay, fine. I guess we do need to go take back Winterfell. Tyler, how did you feel about everything up with the Night's Watch this episode? I enjoyed it overall. It was great to see an actual reunion between these members of this family. It's like we've mentioned, you know, with they haven't seen each other since the very beginning of the show and we're in season six. So it's pretty wild to think that it's been that long since they've had any sort of contact with one another. It's always been like, they might be alive, they might be dead, maybe they'll cross paths and then they don't. You know, we've seen it with uh was it bran bran was in the tower in the past and john was nearby but they never actually crossed paths i was worried that was going to happen again when you know if john was going to actually leave and then they're going to get there after he left i mean the brand stuff was pretty hilarious Just in general i guess both both situations getting you know getting ogled at yeah you know? <laughs> i mean i guess i understand why but it is, it's still <laughs> funny to see uh, but I did enjoy that, you know, the subtlety of just mentioning, oh, yeah, I, I killed your 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 guy that you were, you know, way behind the whole time. So that was really great. The whole stuff with Ramsey on the horizon, that is a, an intriguing new development. Uh, I guess that's going to be a war coming up of some kind or a massive fight battle, whatever term you want to use. That that could be pretty, pretty wild. Uh, obviously, I don't like the I don't like Ramsey, especially after we just watched him kill Osha <laughs> like that. Hopefully. Jon Snow and then prevail, because uh, I would be very upset if they didn't. All right. Christian, how did you feel about everything up at the wall in this episode? So everything in the wall, you know, th things are a bit dicey, but, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out what to do. Um, it was kind of, I had to, like, reserve myself because, you know, obviously Tyler has not seen the entire series, so I kind of had to hold back on a lot of things here. But it's been a while since I've actually, like, rewatched it. I did it maybe about, like, a year, maybe a year and a half ago, but... You know, things in the wall are cooking up. You know, they're they're just trying to figure out what to do about Ramsey because 
you know, he's, he's like, he's the new um, Joffrey. So they got to figure out a way to, you know, take him down and get him off his little high horse. So things are brewing. <laughs> things are cooking up at the wall. They're going to have some type of plan to, you know, go into Winterfell and s- storm the capital, I guess you could say, and, you know, make, make all the rights that are wronged. Yeah, well, speaking of, we did just get one little moment with Ramsey this episode in which he summons Osha. She tries. Uh, she's really spinning her webs, but obviously she did not know that Theon already told that she was the one who helped the Starks escape. Uh, so right. She was coming in blind uh, to an ambush. <laughs> to do what she could i will admit before we even say it's not my favorite way to bring back and kill a character like that uh after we had gone so long without seeing her yeah so we've only seen rick on for the one second still after he got reintroduced to now he's just in a yeah. dungeon i guess so yeah but we'll lump him in over with the stuff up at the veil as well since that is also a northern kind of territory we saw Robin Aaron and Littlefinger <laughs> and Lord Royce for the first time in quite some time. Uh, little Robin, he's, he's growing up. Uh, without that breast milk, he's probably growing a lot faster <laughs> these days on a real diet. Um, I don't know. He was looking pretty rough. He also still can't shoot to save his life, as we saw. Couldn't even come near that board. But <laughs> Not a military man. Not at all. No. <laughs> Lord Royce tried. He tried to get Littlefinger, but she's just not nearly smart enough for that. She says, hey, I thought you were taking her back to the Fingers where you're from. But we heard that she got sold off to the boat end. What's What's up with that? And Littlefinger uh, quickly traps Lord Rice and is like, yeah, well, I only told one person really up here. Uh, I wonder who could have snitched us out and got us ambushed. What do you think, Robin? What do you think we should do about all this? <laughs> Kind of. Charles Robbins like come through the moon door. Uh, yeah. As per usual, oh, that's that's what he loves to do. My little finger continues to spin, makes it seem like Robin Aaron's coming up with plans, but it seems as though he's worked his way into helping Sansa, whatever <laughs> that means. We've seen him help Sansa help. before, so I guess we'll see what that constitutes. Right. This time. Yeah. But how'd you feel about all that, Christian? Honestly, it's, you know, it's Littlefinger, you know, pulling the strings uh, the way that Palpatine should have been pulling the strings in Star Wars, but we're not going to get into that um, in Rise of Skywalker. But, you know, it's it's Littlefinger at, at his best and him, you know, using these verbal gymnastics uh, to get what he wants and making it seem that... Um, you know, Lord Aaron is in control of this entire situation, losing Sansa in this whole entire exchange. So, and I actually wanted to bring up for Asha um, and Yara. So in the book, Yara's name is actually Asha. So they had to change her name or Theon's sister's name, uh, Yara, I mean, Asha to Yara. So there's not that, you know, there's Asha and Asha in the entire show. So I wasn't uh, sure. This is a little fun fact. So yeah, they kind of nicked the name Asha and replaced it with Yara for Theon's uh, <laughs> sister. <laughs> well, how'd you feel about that? All that mess there, Tyler. It was it was interesting. Since we lumped them together, it seemed like two cases where you know people one one side underestimated how smart, much more smart the other side was. You know, yeah. Osha, <laughs> I think, very much underestimated Ramsey in that situation, and just I guess the level of you know steps ahead he was you know as we saw you know he knew everything because theon snitched so long ago and her you know it's not like osha had like a really great plan in general so it was i mean it was unfortunate (laughs) to see her pass in that way but her plan you know we've seen that kind of plan work with lesser people in the in the past but ramsey's Mm -hmm. as much as i don't like him he is a very (laughs) smart you know he is a very smart character to a degree and same goes for little finger we've seen little finger pull the strings of many people throughout the series and he once again has done it with robin aaron you know making him think that he's all high and mighty and pulling like you said he's the one making the decisions he blinded him with this really cool falcon uh, so he'll just do whatever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that guy got to live another day. Just because, you know, just, you know, Robin Aaron said so. 
I, I don't like you said i don't really know where we're going with that with sansa and all that stuff because we obviously we know where sansa is currently in her situation we see theon a land at the iron islands and he is greeted rather coldly by his sister i'm just uh, saying greeting is, wasn't very friendly yeah uh, seeing <laughs> as the last time he saw her was her uh, failed attempt to rescue him from <laughs> from Ramsey <laughs> when he bit her hand and ran back in the cage and she's like fuck this okay bye <laughs> um and ran away <laughs> so she's still like look bruh I tried to save you what are you talking about you escaped you could have escaped with me a long time ago <laughs> and so she is really questioning his motives she's like so what dad dies and you come back here you think you're about to become king I don't think so we kind of know Theon is just trying to live <laughs> At this point, he just wants to exist in life at this point without Ramsey torturing him. And he's like, look, I don't want to lead. I'm here to support you and your claim when the time comes. So let me help you become the ruler of the Iron Island. <laughs> so Tyler, how'd you feel about that short exchange over there with those two and that reunion? Well, we basically kind of said it. It was a very cold reunion, much more, you know, not as friendly as the ones we already previously seen, like between Sansa and John, which is, you know, I understand, you know, the Greyjoys themselves have never been like very upbeat, jovial kind of people. Obviously, they're also green their father i guess if they really like them or not you know that's remains to be seen but i don't know uh where is this other gray joy that is just roaming around throwing people off of bridges like is because i mean because like it seems like nobody see knows he's there or or anything like they, <laughs> he chucked their dad off the bridge and then he's just been hiding ever since which is kind of odd to me i figured that someone would have brought it up brought it up at all you know he has a relative after all i figured maybe he would have greeted somebody on the way back i don't know i figure he's gonna be probably another person that's trying to st uh, take stake in the in the throne if theon's not going to be down to take it so maybe we'll see them clash yara and whoever this great joy is because i don't think they've been given a name they're just a great joy mysterious great joy we'll see where you we're, we'll see if you ever come back after you chuck the dad off the bridge <laughs> christian how'd you feel about the great joy reunion so the great joy re reunion is very uh i mean it's complicated for theon because you know like you guys said um yara goes in and tries to save him once you know he, he runs back into his little cage it shows how broken uh Theon really is and obviously him coming back and just breaking down in front of his sister saying like I finally escaped I finally mustered up the courage to escape and you know Yara doesn't really want to hear any of that but it's like I mean he's he's kind of mutilated like quite literally at this point so yeah it's, it's not, not like kind of, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally mutilated yes. <laughs> Yara saw the evidence in that box for herself so right. yeah. so it's not like he could really I mean he could rule with air quotes but not like you know he couldn't bear any children so I no. mean she's you know she's she's the next best choice honestly and he also just, though it, she does have a right to be somewhat suspicious at first when she's like you escaped or he just let you go because yeah <laughs> they did pull it once where ramsey was like you're gonna pretend to be theon Greyjoy and go in there so that we could snatch this up so it could have been right. like a, is this a trap or uh, he just <laughs> let you go like okay <laughs> that is true yeah i mean she's yeah. very suspicious about everything but it's like you know it's it's kind of like you know Theon's trying to make amends, and no one really obviously believes him because it's like I mean you know he's he hasn't been the best person in the world as of late, and you know he's definitely um, definitely paid for his mistakes more so than most. It's a very interesting uh, thread. Well, then over in King's Landing, a lot went on this time. We saw Marjorie. Uh, talking to the High Sparrow. He's trying to break down her final defenses, telling her, if I send you back to your family, I'm just sending you back to a life of sin. And, you know, there's this really good dialogue, this monologue about what led him to his path. But having to listen to all this uh, gets Marjorie a chance to see Loris for the first time in a very long time. <laughs> yeah, both of them and, have been gone for a while. Yeah, Loris is broken. Uh, he's not as mentally strong as his sister or Cersei. And he's just done. He's like, look, 
I don't care. Let them win. Let them do whatever the hell they want. I just need this to end. I can't handle this. And Marjorie's like, no, we can't do that. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. I think she kind of sees how broken he is. And she's like, well, shit, what do I do? Back in the Red Keep, we see Pycelle. I don't know what the hell he's trying to talk to Tommen about this with the high rambling. sparrow. And Cersei ain't trying to hear it. So she's just like, please, <laughs> like, get out. This is not a small council meeting. Your services are not required. Thank you. Okay, Tommen. Uh, <laughs> and so she gets back to work on Tommen to be like, look, like, we got to get Marjorie out of there. And we have to take the high sparrow down. <laughs> He is a dangerous man who wants to rip our city to the ground and replace it with trash, with little vermin. Cersei is back to the youth. She hates poor people. And so, yeah. also, she particularly hates the poor people of this city because they laughed at her and threw shit at her and saw her walk through the streets naked. So she, she really wants hates them. All, she wants them all dead. So she, she doesn't care what happens to them. But, but she's scheming again. She's back on her scheming ways and she approaches Olena and Kevin as they are speaking. <laughs> and she's like, look, Olena, we don't, we're not going to let Marjorie take that walk of atonement. Yes, there's going to be bloodshed. It's in- inevitable at this point. I will not let my granddaughter go through what I saw Cersei go through. <laughs> so I guess the plan is the Tyrell army is marching in. They will march in and meet the High Sparrow when he tries to send Marjorie through the streets and basically Kevin just has to you know have the um the gold cloaks stand down and <laughs> move out of the way and let the Tyrell army do what they gotta do how'd you feel about everything in King's Landing Christian so you know everything in King's Landing is nothing there's never just like a normal day in the life it, it can't just be like a normal you know like king's meeting you know with with the king's hand and you know everyone else it, there always has to be some kind of plot like going on but it's the high sparrow it's like they're they seem so untouchable i can't really i guess you can call them like a call in a way but they're so like devoted to their faith that it's it's scary to where you know they're always hiding in the shadows and even kevin said himself which i always thought was a very strange like standard name for everyone else in this entire room i'm glad that christian said it this time because i've been saying (laughs) every time he comes up why why is his name kevin Kevin. like everybody else is like cersei lannister olena tyrell kevin kevin (laughs) kevin (laughs) lannister it's like cool kevin wants his son back and you know they're they're trying to save nelly dormer from this this terrible you know walk of atonement type situation even the monologue for the high spread was given, like it made sense, but I'm like, it's just so, it's such a backwards way of thinking about like how he views the world, but like to him, it makes sense. So it's very strange. The army is coming and I'm, I'm very excited to see, well, I mean, I know what happens, but just in general, like it's, it's just always exciting to like relive um, everything that does happen between, you know, the throwdown between the high sparrow and, you know, the, the uh, Tyrell um, army, so it's um, it's it's going to be some interesting stuff for sure. It's they're cooking up something good. <laughs> um, oh man, well I agree with a lot of what Christian already said about you know the High Sparrow and his beliefs and how backwards a lot of that is. Uh, Jonathan Price, you know he's acting his ass off. You know those monologues, <laughs> you know they're pretty great monologues. Even if I don't believe in what <laughs> he's saying necessarily, they're just such good compelling dialogues mm. you know, whether he's talking to you know we saw one with Tommen how easily he disarmed Tommen with his words not too long ago and he pretty much kind of did the same here for Marjorie uh I mean as much as I love Olena and all them I I mean it'll be in- intriguing to see them have an alliance I guess you know if it's just it's fun that they the common ground they finally agreed to after all this time was we're not gonna let Marjorie go <laughs> go do that walk of shame now we can finally be kind of friends for a moment here and we're going to take out the high sparrow which is exciting because the high sparrows have kind of i feel like they've definitely overstayed their welcome i mean it is cersei's fault pretty much that they're even here in the first place i'll be excited for if that battle goes in the 
the direction I hoped for, I guess. Because, I mean, I'd be upset if, it, you know, if they did all that and then High Sparrows win. Because that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> like I say, like say that would be pretty, pretty crappy. <laughs> it was nice to see Marjorie and Loris. You know, we haven't seen them in a very long time. I wish I, I wish Loris's appearance was a bit better in the sense that he wasn't like this absolutely broken shell of what he, used, he once used to be. Which I, although I do understand why he is that way, it's not like it's out of character for him to be just completely disheveled and wanting everything to end. Because he's, I mean, how long has he been in there now? I mean, he was in there the longest out of all of them. Let's but not, yeah, let's not fake the funk that Cersei is doing all this just for Marjorie. It's also, if they save Marjorie, that means they take down the High Sparrow before her trial. So right, yeah, Cersei yeah. has her own reasons for what she's doing, even if she's trying to hide them with other sort of alliances, I guess you could say. She's, I mean, she's never liked Marjorie. I mean, that was very obvious. Even when Tommen brought it up, she made sure to completely dodge the question if she liked Marjorie <laughs> or not. Just completely deflected it, didn't even answer the question. Like, it doesn't matter if I like her or not. Well then, over across the narrow sea, our final plot lines of the episode, we see Tyrion acting as like the stand-in advisor of the moment and as we heard last time he has welcomed the great masters the good masters of young kai and astapor over some familiar faces including the, the slaver who sold the Tyrion, who bought Tyrion. uh did not yeah. see him again also that man that daenerys uh snatched that gold was like thank you very much for this gold uh <laughs> you can go on now as <laughs> drogon uh, kind of threatened him back in season three Tyrion basically says look I know that you're funding the Sons of the Harpy. Like, okay, I'll, I'll look, I'll pretend you're not funding them, but yes, you're going to cut off the money all the same. Uh, and in exchange, we've learned that cutting off slavery immediately without a new economic system to replace it was not the best option. So we will give you seven years in those other slave cities to phase out slavery, and then you will be compensated fairly. Marine, however, will remain slave free. We will not be going back to any sort of slavery here in Marine. Obviously, Grey Worm and Masante are not on board with this plan. They hadn't really been on board with his plans since he's been kind of doing stuff over here. <laughs> no, I, I think I think they've pretty much been at odds since <laughs> Daenerys left, pretty much. Yeah. Even before then, probably a little bit, too. Yeah, so they are like, uh, no. Seven years is a long-ass time to be a slave. <laughs> trust trust yeah. us. You were a slave for <laughs> a few days or a week or whatever the hell it was. Uh, yeah, not very we long. Were, <laughs> we were snatched from our parents and slaves from basically birth. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and trust, they are concocting stuff as well. And they're not just going to go along with this plan as you think they will. Once again, we've told you, this is like, they don't know these languages and these bullshit that you keep trying to sell us. They they at least try to keep the peace with the former slaves who are already mad, which this has basically been Daenerys <laughs> conflict this whole time, trying to be peaceful to the masters while also trying to appease the former slaves, give them their freedom, but they also want justice. So <laughs> this balance yeah, is conundrum, yeah. Tyrion's getting a little taste as those former <laughs> slaves were like, what the hell are you doing? Why are they in here? Like, <laughs> um, Meanwhile, we catch up with Jorah and Dario. Jorah's going through it. Jorah's struggling up the mountains. <laughs> um, but uh, he unfortunately reveals his secret to Dario by accident that he <laughs> does have a little bit of grayscale crawling up the arm. And Dario's like, oh. Uh, okay, well, you know what that does to you, right, bruh? And he's like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then there, yeah. the Jorah did guess correctly. They did take Daenerys to the Dosh Kaleen, um, and Vice Dothrak, and they decide to sneak in. Hmm to varying results. <laughs> Dario <laughs> don't listen to all that customs BS and brings his knife in regardless. He said, the hell with this. <laughs> and Daenerys is like working on this little girl 
who was like taken as a Khaleesi young and obviously is not like these old ones, these old crows who are trying to tell Daenerys like, oh, you went out to the world that ain't right and all that mess. And she's like, look, girl, I'm not going to, we're not going to kill you, but don't betray me. (laughs) Okay. Uh, I got a plan. We're not just going to run up out of here. And later we see Daenerys's plan when she's brought to trial and well, these calls are just as gross and disgusting as they've been since we've met them pretty much as they've been since we saw the dothraki in season one this is their custom they don't respect women at all uh they just see her as a thing to screw and pass around and they're like that's what we're gonna do with you and she's like no 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 that's not what actually is happening you people aren't fit to lead the dothraki so (laughs) i will take up the mantle and you will die and she (laughs) burns. Burn the whole building down. Sacred temple to the ground <laughs> with all of the calls inside of it <laughs> emerges from the flames and all of the Dothraki, who, as a little reminder, are already like way superstitious as a culture. They are scared of magic. They do not trust magic. <laughs> so when they see this woman walking out the flames, they are shook to the high heavens and like, oh my God, okay. And bend the knee. Dario is shook as well. He's not seen this magic trick from Daenerys before. <laughs> He's only seen her, uh, you know, with the dragon. He saw her ride, but he ain't seen her walk through the flames. Jorah's like, oh, okay, been here, done this. Right. <laughs> well, Jorah is ready. He's been the ultimate simp since been day one. <laughs> Just, I mean, he's been having that knee bent everywhere he goes. Um, I think he, I, he could. He probably was. You know, you would have thought he would have been already bending down before she walked through. You know, she oh. was re- He was ready. But also in doing this, uh, as well as a refresher on Dothraki culture, their their thing, as a reminder to season one, is not by any sort of rank. They don't go by any sort of titles. If you kill their call, you become the new call. So mm-hmm. Daenerys killed, like, killed everybody. all of their all calls of <laughs> all in one fail swoop. And thus, they all now are like, OK, you are our new call. <laughs> So yeah. She is the, the great Khaleesi of all of the Dothraki because they were all there for the ceremony. So, yeah. how did you feel about everything over there, Tyler? Well, I guess to start off with the less cool stuff, Tyrion, mate, wheeling and dealing. I mean, I could totally, I could totally understand why they would be very hesitant about his wheeling and dealing. You know, Masande and Grey Worm. Uh, it's definitely not ideal to give them seven years to, you know, phase out slavery because that's, you know, seven years is a very long time. Uh, they've been at odds, Grey Worm, Masande, and Tyrion since he's taken up the, taken up the leadership. Uh, it's tough, though, because, like, I want to trust Tyrion because Tyrion always is so smart. You know, he's always usually the smartest, almost always usually the smartest person in the room. And usually, you know, he'll find a way out of whatever it is. So I, I, I kind of want to trust him in that sense. I feel like everyone else, as far as the characters go, they don't really believe in him as much because they don't really know. I mean, I hope it works out in their favor. They, now that Daenerys has like a massive ultra army, I guess it won't really, you know, it, that could also come into play whenever she does come back. She's going to have like this huge over oversized army now <laughs> they're gonna take on anyone uh but as far as the daenerys stuff and jorah and all them uh, poor jorah you know jorah's trying his best to keep up you know he he's kind of old he feels like old news almost as dario is kind of going around you know stabbing folk and taking out everybody he's throwing s- sand to people's face to, <laughs> <laughs> just to try and stay alive Attempting. <laughs> yeah yeah he didn't even actually hit him in the face he was just trying to throw sand in their face uh but the stuff with daenerys was great you know we, we already know that dorothraki are pretty terrible when it comes like we said the customs with women um very interesting plan that's not the plan i was expecting you know you know usually when you think of plans like that it's not i'm gonna lock the building and I'm going to burn down the whole building with myself in it and then walk and then walk out the front door because generally that's not how things work you don't just burn the whole building down with everybody in it and then walk out fine but Daenerys is special but uh it was very interesting the way that she decided to have the Dorthraki army kind of under new management just burn them all alive in a building and walk out and now you have this massive army now but I'm intrigued to see where we go with this absolutely massive army now where we'll go because that's like a very big strength in numbers you know gain there 
Plus, you know, you have your dragons. Kind of scary to think about the possibilities there with that with such a massive army. Oh, and still Dario's little peeps. There's just so many people with this giant army. Like I like I'm it's kind of wild to think what we may go forward with with her character because just because she has three dragons well drogon somewhere but he'll, he'll come back probably <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but she has at least two dragons at the ready with drogon maybe on the side and this massive army plus everyone else but uh go go, go daenerys it was a good episode for daenerys standing up to everybody and now she's like a new leader to all these crazy folk how do you feel about all the stuff over in marine slash vase dothrax christian so, you know, everything that happens with Tyrion, it's, you know, he's trying to negotiate with these slavers um, or these masters, I guess you could say. It's almost as if he's trying to negotiate as if he was back in Westeros. Obviously, that's a different custom than what uh, they're used to. And, you know, like you guys said, giving them, in instead of abolishing slavery overnight, which is something you probably could have done, but it's like, you know, realistically, probably not going to happen. So he's trying to give them time to, you know, change over. But it's like, you know, if they don't abide by that, who knows what may happen to them. But so it's tough because like we already saw them try to abolish slavery and then Tyrion became a slave briefly in that interim. <laughs> so like it's hard to, I guess in general, it is kind of hard to abolish slavery just outright immediately. So yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's it's very um, you know, he's he's trying different tactics, you know. Tyrion's a very smart man and you know, we can't see his end game just yet, you know. So obviously when it comes to me Sunday and and Grey Worm, they're like, Okay, you know, like why are you, you know, negotiating these type of <laughs> tactics with them? But you know, he, Tyrion has something up his sleeve and it's just a matter of time before he reveals what it is. You know, he's 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 a little silver tongue devil, so uh, much, much like, um, I mean, much like Littlefinger in a way, you know, it's, they, they, they know the politics of how these, how these games are played. And like you said, you know, you have to make peace with your enemies, not your friends, because, you know, you don't really have to worry about your friends. You know, you, you've already built, uh, built that, um, that relationship with them, but it's really your enemies who you have to watch out for. With Daenerys, you know, she just continues to dominate you know she she finds her way it's out of these uh sticky situations and she's like well i'm just gonna kind of do a repeat of what i already did almost like within you know the ending of season one um which you know kind of that whole parallel there but now she's kind of like the leader of the, the raki and like you guys said she has like this mega army and it just seems not everything goes her way necessarily because you know we've seen it in previous um seasons but you know things are turning around for her as of right now and you know we'll just have to wait until she gets back whenever or however you know uh they get back to marine that's gonna be you know she she entrusts Tyrion with you know these these types of situations because he's the only other person who really knows how to deal with people who are in power like no matter what side of the uh of the sea that they uh, live on. I guess we'll see where Ghost from Ant Man and the Wasp plays into everything. <laughs> yeah. since, since she, she got to live. I think it's definitely an interesting time with Daenerys. I mean, cause she's definitely been season five, particularly was just a struggle for her. I mean, she got she wrote a dragon, but the politics with the politics of this world, right as we continue to see are so effed up that yeah. <laughs> uh she's been taking a lot of l's on that front like the politics stuff is not but when she flexes muscle i mean that's when stuff goes her way because i mean it's hard to put up much of a fight to what she offers on <laughs> just pure power but all right this was only for tyler because christian already knows what what are some predictions, Tyler? Uh, well, I feel like Daenerys is gonna come back to Marine with this actually this absolutely huge army. I, I guess that would be pretty wild to see. Now that she has like this massive horde, I don't even know how many people that would be. Like we saw how far like the people went. We have the pan out shots. It's just insane the amount of people there. When they were circling uh, her too, it's like all yeah. those people. Yeah, they were very easy to follow because they had all those horse tracks. You know 
all the way down. Um, <laughs> as far as that, I guess that's where I would predict, you know, she'll be back and maybe she'll be, but I don't know if she'll be happy or maybe because she has such a massive army now, things might be a little bit different politics wise. She might be like, actually, we're not going to give you seven years. We're going to end it much sooner. Actually, forget what that man said. <laughs> we come up for you now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's inevitable to see Jon Snow and the, you know the wildlings and all them face off against Ramsay. Uh, seems like it's kind of inevitable with the way that we're trying to set up their storylines, you know, gain potentially try and gain back Winterfell or die trying and save Rickon, I guess, in the process. I guess I don't really care that much about Osha if she's alive or not. As far as like the more, I mean, the other storylines, uh, I mean, I feel like they are going to stop everything before Marjorie has to do the whole walk of shame thing. I don't know necessarily what that's going to entail. That'll be remain to be seen. I'm excited for whatever that outcome for that is. I'm sure it's going to be pretty wild. Well, we didn't have any Arya this episode, so. Sadly not. It's with Rick on what his fate is after being well, gone for two seasons. <laughs> well, based based on where he's located in the dungeon with Ramsay, I'm, I'm, I'm not hopeful. If we're going to do that trial by combat thing with the mountain, I'll, I'm, I'm curious if that'll actually happen or not. <laughs> Just because like, I, I just find that so fascinating. Like he he lost a trial by combat and now can do, do another one. All right, Christian, who were your faves and least faves for this episode? Honestly, like I can't really say there was like a least favorite because like I really do love like a lot of these characters in this episode. I mean, I guess if I had to choose a least favorite, I mean, I guess it would be Asha. I mean, but like it's, you know, she's taking care of Rickon for like this entire time. And she's kind of just dead now. So <laughs> I guess she would, <laughs> she's just, you know, she's there. But I mean, my, my favorites between like little, little finger and Ramsey and even Cersei. Cause I mean, Cersei's has always been one of my favorites. It's, oh, Christian it's, loves the evil folks. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> just a little bit. I'm a little oh, bit. Oh my right now. I love the evil Ramsey, Cersei. It's just the, the way that finger. they, the way how they're able to abuse their power and still keep it long after, you know, like, I mean, usually people who get in that type of power, who they're obviously afraid to lose it, but they don't really show that weakness until things really get like super, super dicey. And, you know, there for a while, Cersei with her walk of atonement, she, Kind of had that taken away from her for a little bit, but now, you know, she's just, like you guys said, she's back to hating the poor people, so. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, honestly, just great performances around by everyone this episode. It's a very solid episode as well. And, I mean, season six is just, it's it's one of my favorites ever. Like, it just blows me away, like, how good <laughs> it is. But that's me. I know other people don't feel that way, but you know, to, to each their own, for sure. All right. And Tyler, who were your faves and least faves? Faves. You know, Daenerys is up there. You know, she had a great, a lot of great stuff at the end of the episode. You know, how could I not put her in the faves category with the way she just roasted everybody, literally, <laughs> and then walked out, of the, walked out of the building and had everyone kneel for her. I mean, that's Tyler loves a good roasting, get. both literally and figuratively. <laughs> I'll take either one, if not both, at the same time. Um, Elena was great. You know, even no matter how much screen time she has, she always has phenomenal lines. You know, always great. Probably one of the best people in the show ever to come, you know, when it comes to shading people. Uh, that's always a delight, you know, Olena. I think John was pretty good this episode and like the small capacity he was around, you know, mm -hmm. try, you know, he was, he had to be kind of talked off the ledge, so to speak, because he was ready to just leave and just, well, I guess it's a good <laughs> thing he didn't leave because then he wouldn't have got that letter. Being like, hey, uh, we're gonna kill your brother. Uh, bring back your <laughs> bring back your sister, or we're gonna just kill everybody. Yeah, that would have been awkward if he just left and didn't get get to read that letter, and they had to deal with it without him. Uh, Brienne was great too. Brienne had some great solid moments here, <laughs> throwing her own types of shade at Melisandre, especially that was hilarious. The digs, the dig there. Uh, we'll see where that goes with her, with her and what's his face, Tormund. Tormund, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, obviously, the interest seems very one-sided currently. It seems, it seems very one-sided right now. He, he seems very interested in her, and he, she seems like revolted. <laughs> Tyrion was pretty good. I always love Tyrion. 
his his wheeling and dealing this episode i didn't necessarily agree with but hopefully it's kind of you know it'll be changed as the uh episodes progress or it's you know he's very very wise we, i i i, I want to have faith in him from previous stuff well at least faves you know you gotta have ramsey up there you know killing osha i mean osha also should have realized how stupid that plan was but you know i would put her in the least favorite category just because like you know she didn't know better you know underestimated ramsey there a uh, little little robin aaron never been a big fan of him sorry uh i mean little finger didn't do anything too terrible this episode for me to like dislike him i mean robin aaron's just annoying like, little finger you know he has his moments are there any I don't robin know. aaron fans out there leave, leave it in the comments does anyone like the character of robin aaron let us know yeah they do. all right well that was our reaction and discussion for season six episode four of game of thrones hopefully you enjoyed it if you did go ahead click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so that you are always up to date on all of my latest videos, including each and every one of our Game of Thrones reactions. We only have about two and a half seasons left, so you're definitely gonna want to finish this journey off with us as we get closer to House of the Dragon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess thankfully I don't have to finish this series to understand House of the Dragon because it's a prequel <laughs> series. So, I mean, that's one, that's one bonus to doing yes. both, I guess. All right. Well, Christian, thank you so much for joining us. Do you want to yeah, let thanks. people know where they can find you? Yeah, so you can uh, follow us, uh, our podcast, on podcast platforms around the internet. That includes uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Um, sorry, the name of the podcast. Sorry, it's been a long day. It's the mystery. Optic. But uh, the name of our podcast is Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. Um, we're just a weekly podcast that brings critics and non-critics and optical vision into film, TV, Hollywood news, reviews, and all that jazz. So, you know, join us each and every week. So definitely a lot of fun things going on uh, for our podcast. It is an audio-only podcast. Just to let you guys know, um, this we, we do have like a YouTube channel, but have, that was during a before time <laughs> when we were trying out some things there. So definitely, you know, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that jazz. Again, Larry, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a lot of fun. And for all the listeners out there, again, you can just follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Film Optics. Again, that's Optics with an X. All right. And Tyler, where can folks find you? Well, I guess, you know, you can always find me on this channel, but, uh, you know, you, you search up my name on YouTube, Tyler Calvert, you'll find my channel for reviews, reactions, rankings, unboxings, a bunch of other stuff along the way. Uh, definitely a lot of reviews and reactions for many different movies and shows, but you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram and it's Tyler Calvert. Perfect. And let us know. What did you think of season six, episode four? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Or as you heard, you can hit all three of us up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your continued support. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.